Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Real United States. I'm your host, Paul Campbell, and behind the camera, as always, is our camera operator and my wife, Beverly Campbell. We're here on the banks of the Muskegon River, just south of Big Rapids, Michigan again. You may remember from our last episode, we were upstream in Everett, Michigan, and there was some serious flooding going on. The water seems to have subsided a bit. They've opened the spill gates on some of the dams downstream, and we wanted to show you a little bit of that. Now behind me is the first of the dams that is downstream from where we were. This is the Rogers Dam. We're about four or five miles south of Big Rapids. And this dam is in fact a hydroelectric generating dam. It was built here in 1906. It belongs to Consumers Energy and produces 6.7 megawatts of electricity for the local area. The dam itself is 43 feet high, and it's created quite a nice lake upstream from here that's also used as a recreational area for people, for boating, fishing, swimming, and it's a really nice setting. So there are in fact three local dams that all belong to Consumers Energy that are hydroelectric plants in various stages down the river, and this is just the first of them that we would like to show to you. Now, as you can see, the water is not spilling over the dam, so the, the flooding has subsided. But I'd like to say that the reason for that is, although the snow has melted, we haven't really gotten into the spring rains yet this year. So there still is concern about flooding, but right now at least, folks are getting a little relief, and the water seems to be at a reasonable level. So we're gonna try and give you some more scenes here around the dam and hopefully you enjoy this small hydroelectric dam here in Big Rapids, Michigan. Okay, we've moved around to the downstream side of the, of the Rogers Dam. And you can see here where the water's coming out that they have in fact opened the spill gates. At least a few of them are open right now. Some of them are still closed. This is to regulate the flow of the water. And you can probably hear the rush of the water coming down alongside of me here. So they're keeping a close eye on this and regulating how many of these spill gates to open to keep the water levels at the proper elevation so that there isn't flooding further upstream and there isn't too much water flowing downstream to the lower areas and to the lower dams. And it's a pretty impressive thing to stand next to actually because the sound, I don't know if it's being picked up properly, but is a really impressive deep roar that there is next to me. And you can see the mist coming out here as the water spills over the edge of the, the dam. It's a pretty impressive sight. I'm really enjoying this. We got a little break in the clouds, so we've got some good light. And it's it's really, really beautiful sight. Um, the water from here starts to head downhill quite rapidly as the terrain drops away. And it's a, just a gorgeous sight. We haven't, uh, we haven't gotten into where the leaves are coming out yet this spring, but still very, very pretty. Okay, we've moved downstream down the Muskegon River about 10 or 15 miles. And now we are in front of the Hardy Dam. The Hardy Dam is the largest of the three dams along the river in our area. This particular dam was built in 1931. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty massive structure. This, the official measurement, and I don't know if that's taken from the bottom of the channel or where, is 106 feet tall. So this, this massive mound of earth that you see up behind me is actually the dam. It's an earthen dam. And this particular dam, also a hydroelectric plant owned by Consumers Power, generates 30 megawatts of electric energy for the local area. So again, it's the largest producing hydroelectric plant of the three that we're going to show you. Now you can see the 1930s style structure. It's very well maintained. Uh, this is a typical sort of a industrial or commercial building that might have been built 
in the early 1930s, early 1920s out of this color of brick, certainly here in this part of the world. And you'll notice that not near as spectacular a rush of water from this dam as there was at the Hardy Dam, even though it's a much larger dam with a much larger body of water behind it. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I suspect it's because the majority of the water regulation is being taken care of at the Hardy Dam, or the Rogers Dam, rather, the Rogers Dam upstream. And, uh, but you can see this is a very subdued outlet of water. I could personally hear the turbines running in the background behind me. They're relatively quiet, though. It's, it's not a loud piece of machinery at all. It's barely audible, even to me, and I'm only standing about 100 yards away from the building. So certainly not something that's going to be obnoxious or irritating to the local residents. It's a very quiet operating plant. And we're not going to show it on camera, but there are a couple of gentlemen down here, one with his son in small boats, anchored, that are fishing along here. So very nice, peaceful setting. The sun came out, it's a very beautiful day. And so we're, we're really enjoying this. this. Even though we've heard so much about these dams in the time that we've lived up here, this is actually the first opportunity that we've had to come down close and examine them and just see what they're like. So this is kind of a, a special occasion for us and we get to share it with all of you. So again, this is the Hardy Dam. And it's a uh, Got a lot more water behind it, but it's a lot more subdued discharge. All right, folks, we've moved about another 10 to 15 miles downstream from the Hardy Dam, and this is the Croton Dam. We're down, down in Nuego County. And the, the Croton Dam is 40 feet high. It was built in 1907. It's another of the hydroelectric plants here along the Muskegon River, and it actually generates 8.85 megawatts of electrical energy for the local community. Now, in 1907, this would have been a rather cutting edge piece of technology. In the first decade of the 20th century in the United States, electricity was not still in wide use. It didn't actually become really extensively widely used in the United States probably until the middle of the 1920s, or certainly the end of the, the teens, just after World War I. So, as you can see, there's a fairly impressive amount of water that's being allowed to come down through the spill gates that they have open in order to regulate the water levels. But as you saw earlier, the flooding situation that we had a few weeks ago has largely subsided. And part of that is because of the management that the local governments do in order to maintain the water levels and the water flow here at a nice, even pace so that people neither upstream nor downstream are being flooded. But that is an impressive amount of water coming through those gates. Now you can see there's about eight gates along here. And in fact, only two of them are open right now. So that's all that we need currently for the existing water levels. Obviously there's a emergency spillway in the middle. 
but I just love this early 20th century architecture of the brickwork of these industrial buildings from that period. And you again can see that this has been very well built and very well maintained. A lot of folks down here enjoying this, this beautiful sunny Saturday. It's uh, the first really nice weather we've had this spring. A lot of folks out fishing and enjoying themselves. So really a very pleasant, pleasant experience today. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, we encourage you to pick, subscribe, and join us for future episodes. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I try to get back to everybody as soon as I possibly can. And as always, thank you for watching.